So the initial Islam medicine, which is sponsoring this course, who you've you've uh, you've engaged with to take uh, this class, it does work at this broad intersection of the Islamic tradition, biomedicine, and Muslim practices. And the work that we do is research in the empirical domain as well as the textual domain and theological domain. So to give you a sense, right, we study how Islam informs the the patient, uh, the behaviors of Muslim patients, and the decisions that they make, as well as the challenges that they may face in the healthcare system. We think about how Islam informs the bioethical attitudes and practices of Muslim physicians. And then we think about how Islamic scholars uh, perceive the field of healthcare and how they opine on issues of biomedicine to pro providing moral guidance to policymakers, uh, clinicians, uh, as well as patients and families. How they think about, how they imagine what healthcare is and how biomedicine uh, intersects with the tradition. Right on the theological as well as the moral registers. So we engage in textual research and participate with them in a you know ulema and and and, and practitioner collaboration, uh, thinking about how to actually produce better guidance, uh, more uh, informed policies, more informed fatawa, for example. So that is an ongoing enterprise uh, with uh, collaboration with Muslim scholars. So now to the course, right? There are 10 self-paced modules in this class. I'll be giving an open lecture. This today is a little bit of an orientation lecture, but I'll give you an introduction to actually the focus questions for each session, which are translated into learning objectives. There will be a couple of self-reflection questions. These are intended for you to think about as you do the readings. Um, and then there's a bunch of material, some readings, right? So selective, uh, selected for you, curated by myself, um, to give you the sense of what the field is about, the discourse is about, or a particular uh, topic, how we engage with that, and some videos to help clarify those concepts or give you new ideas. Again, these are supposed to be sort of short, but some of them are, are, are longer than others. And there'll be a knowledge check quiz for each reading and video. A couple of quick questions, true and false, uh, to give you a sense of whether you understood things correctly or not you can take it multiple times and you must pass that with about a 70 percent uh, you know rate to then move on to the next video next next reading and then there'll be a closing lecture that i give longer than the introductory lecture uh, that will bring kind of my perspectives on the discussion questions those learning objectives I'll bring in the readings and videos into conversation with each other to give you a sense of why they were selected and, and what you were supposed to get out of them. And then some other tidbits about the field. <clears throat> I, I have a chance to sit on a podium and, and riff a bit, so I'll do so. There'll be office hours for this class. So you'll get whatever modules you complete, you'll get the CME credit for those modules. But in totality, we'd like you to complete eight of the 10 modules. Um, they're sequential and they're orchestrated in such a way that one builds on the other, as I'll show you in a second. There are just generally three course targets, but there are some specific notions of that. So as you see here, we like to gain insights into the discourse of science bioethics, right? This course is about the discourse, the different disciplines that are involved, right? So therefore we want you to identify the main actors in the discourse and their outputs so that you become informed consumers of Islamic by this literature. There's a lot of stuff out there. There are a lot of people putting out a lot of different things. Sometimes it doesn't quite make sense, but we want you to become informed consumers of that output. The second main goal is for you to become literate in the concepts of Islamic morality and ethics. There's some specific terms and terminology that you must know as you engage the field, as you engage with your own practice. And therefore, we want you to understand how these various frameworks inform the right and good in Islam, right? Uh, theological frameworks, moral frameworks, right? Legal frameworks. So how they inform this notion of the right and good, obviously, how they inform ethics or ethical frameworks in the tradition. And the reason for that is because when you recognize a fractured state of engagement with contemporary bioethics, right? Uh, we are responding to a, a phenomenon, to a field that is ongoing, right? And sometimes our engagement is not as great as it needs to be. Uh, so therefore, I want you to understand how morality and how ethics comes together in the tradition, and then we can engage in a more sort of informed way, but one that will then make significant impact on biomedicine, particularly through the lens of bioethics. Lastly, we want you to gain knowledge about Islamic juridical rulings related to certain bioethical issues, right? And maybe this is the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the item that drove you to this course, right? You want to learn about Islamic rulings. 
So we'll share those, right? Specific rulings, we'll share them with you. Uh, I'm going to give you the underlying ethical legal basis of that ruling. So you know, where there's plurality, you understand the basis of that plurality. Where there are limitations, you understand why there are limitations of what was said, so that you can then ultimately become learned practitioners that are formed and informed by Islamic morality. So those are the main three aims of this of this class. Uh, inshallah, Allah will bless us together.